Okay, let's open um, chapter two of my lectures on college algebra videos with 2.1 on functions. Functions are used all throughout all kinds of mathematics courses and economics courses and business courses and science courses and so forth because they relate they give the relationship between two variables like time and wind or current and voltage or you know anything of that nature so you know revenue cost or the number of items and, and the, the profit per uh, gained and so forth so first of all let's describe what a relation is a relation is actually any correspondence between two variables so y equal x squared is a relation, i equal pt is a relation, that might be like a business model for interest, um, x squared plus y squared equal 9 is a relation. But the problem is, is that, and it doesn't, and by the way, the relation doesn't have to just be two variables, but usually that's what we're dealing with here. But the problem is, is these are not all considered functions. A relation contains all functions, but some function, I mean, but some relations are not functions. So, for instance, we'll find out that y equals x squared is a function, but x squared plus y squared equals 9 is not a function. The definition of a function basically says that it is a correspondent that assigns each element x from a set D to, that's called the domain, to exactly one element y of a set R called the range. So basically what it means is, is that the first element in your ordered pair can only be assigned to only one element in the second pair. So each element from this domain which is generally the first value of your ordered pair can only be assigned to one element from the range which is the second value of your ordered pair. And so let's look at some functions and I'll, I'll come back to the one-to-one -one example in a minute. But let's look at this is sort of a silly example that I used but suppose that there's six people uh, invited to a dance. Let's say there's three guys and three girls. Let's say set D are the guys, and that's Sam, Joe, and Bob. And then let's say set R is the girls, and that's Lou, Mary, and Kay. Now, if we were to pair the people together like this, like let's say Sam danced with Lou, you know, only Lou, and Joe only danced with Mary, and Bob only danced with Kay, then we would have a function because each element from set D is assigned to only one element in set R. So Sam is only assigned to Lou, Joe is only assigned to Mary, and Bob is only assigned to Kay. Now, but, I like to call this two-time and Sam, if Sam was dancing with Lou and Sam was dancing with Mary, now we have an element from the domain that's assigned to two different elements in the range. And so that would not be a function. Okay, So that's the primary difference. That's how you can tell whether something is a function or not a function. It's, it's usually quicker to tell if something's not a function because all you have to do is just find one two time an element and once you find one then you know it's not a function okay now a one-to-one -one function has the additional property that each element from the range is assigned to only one element in the domain so this number one here is not only a function but it's also a one-to-one -one function, and I actually note that down here. The first example is also a one-to-one -one function because we have the additional property that each element from set R is assigned to only one element of set D. 
So I already told you that Sam's only assigned to Lou, Mary's only assigned to, uh, I mean, Joe's only assigned to Mary, Bob's only assigned to Kay. But if you go the other way, Lou is only assigned to Sam, Mary is only assigned to Joe, and Kay is only assigned to Bob. Now, this second example, we wouldn't even talk about it being a one-to-one -one function, because to be a one-to-one -one function, you have to first be a function. And so, obviously, that can't be a one-to-one -one function. Now, here's an interesting pairing down here in number three. Here, Sam is only assigned to one person in the range, and that's Lou. Joe is only assigned to one person in the range, and that's Lou again. Bob is assigned to only one person, and that's Mary. So, by definition, this is a function because each of the guys are assigned to only one lady. It doesn't matter that Lou is two-timing here, but, um, but basically Sam is with Lou, Joe is with Lou, Bob is with Mary, and it turns out that Kay is setting this dance out. So, but, but that, by definition, this is still a function, okay? But it's not one-to-one, -one, and I say that right here. The last example is indeed a function, although it's not one-to-one. -one. Because for it to be a one-to-one -one function, it has to go both directions. And here you see Lou with Sam, and you see Lou with Joe, so therefore it doesn't go the other way. And so it violates this definition up here of what a one-to-one -one function is. So that's a kind of a silly example of a function. Let's look at an example involving sets. Okay, in number one, we see that the number one is assigned to two from the domain, three from the domain is assigned to four, and five from the domain is assigned to six. So eat these elements one, three, and five from the domain are each assigned to only one value in the range. One's only assigned to two, three's only assigned to four, five's only assigned to six. So this is a function. Now, if you go the other way, go from the range to the domain. Two is assigned to one, four is assigned to three, and six is assigned to five. So are any of these three range elements assigned to more than one domain element? And if you look at it, you can see that it's not. There's Each range element is assigned to only one domain element. So therefore, not only is this a function, but this is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Now let's look at number two. Number two right here. Here, 1 is, is assigned to 2, 2 is assigned to 2, and 3 is assigned to 2. Well, at first glance, you might think it's not a function, but think about it. 1 is assigned only to 2. 2 is assigned only to 2. 3 is assigned only to 2. So that actually is a function. So it is a function. The problem is it's not one-to-one -one because if you go the other way, obviously two, an element from the range, is assigned to more than one element from the domain. Okay, now here on the third one, you see that one is assigned to two and one is assigned to three. And we can stop there because once I find an element from the domain that's assigned to two different elements in the range, one corresponds to two, one corresponds to three, then this is not a function, and therefore it's not one-to-one. -one. Okay? Now, algebraic expressions or relations might be a function or might not. Let's take a look at y equal 3x minus 5. Plug some values of x into here and see what happens. If you plug... Um, x equal 2 in, you'll get y equals 1. If you plug x equal 3 in, you'll get y equals 4, and so forth. And if you continue doing that, 
you would see that each x value you choose only corresponds to one y value. So that means that this is a function. Okay? So, but also, if you wrote every possible ordered pair out, you would find that each y value also only corresponds to one x value. So not only is this a function, but it's a one-to-one -one function. And here's an example of that. Right here's here's the graph, and let's see what did I what did I plug in? I plugged in a, a two and a three. Okay, so if I plug in two, if I can get it to go to two, there we go. So if I plug in two, I only get one. So x when x is two, it only corresponds to y equals one. And then if I go up here to x equal three. Right. Come on, come on. Doesn't want to cooperate. There it was. Three, four. So when x is three, y only corresponds to four. And likewise, when y is four, it only corresponds to three. So you can see that if you pick an x value over here, it's only going to correspond with whatever the corresponding y value is down here. And likewise, if you pick an x value over here, it's going to correspond with whatever y value is here. Also, if you pick a y value anywhere on the y-axis, it's just going to correspond with one value on the x-axis. So therefore, this is a function, and it's a one-to-one -one function. Okay, let's look at this right here. It says y equals x squared plus 3. Each x is assigned to only one y value. So if you were to, say, pick x equal 2... 2 squared plus 3 would be 7. So 2 is only assigned to 7. If you were to pick x equal 3, 3 squared would be 9. 9 plus 3 would be 12. So therefore, you would only get one value for each x value. And you can see that each, each value you choose down here on the x-axis only corresponds to one y value. But here's something interesting. Notice, like if I chose 8, there's a corresponding y value over here and there's a corresponding y value over here. In other words, 8 on the uh, y-axis corresponds to two different x, x values. Let me go ahead and show you. I'm just going to graph the two vertical lines, x equal negative 2 and x equal positive 2. Um, notice that, they, the, that y equal 7 corresponds to negative 2, but y equal 7 also corresponds to positive 2 in the domain. So since you've got a range element, 7, that corresponds to two different domain elements, this is not one-to-one. -one. It is a function, but it's not one-to-one. -one. Okay, this relation here, where you have absolute value of y equal x, is actually not a function, because if you were to let x be 3 and you were to solve that, you would actually solve that and find out that y equals minus 3 or plus 3. So you have a y value here, or I'm sorry, an x value here that actually corresponds to two different y values. And an example of that, if I show you the graph, here's the graph of that particular uh, relation. And so if you take an x value of 3, which is right here, you'll get the point up here, which is 3, negative 3, and you'll get the point down here, which is 3, I mean, sorry, up there was 3, positive 3, and then down here is going to be the point 3, negative 3. So you've got an x value that corresponds to two different y values, so that's not a function, and therefore it cannot be 1 to 1. Okay, pause the video and go ahead and read this definition on independent and dependent variables. But basically, when you have an expression like this, y equals 3x minus 2, x is the dependent variable, and, and y, I'm sorry, y is the dependent variable, y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable, because y depends on whatever x is to have a value. And you have the same thing here. Here, the independent variable is t, and the dependent variable is s of t, because s or s of t depends on whatever t is. The next video, I'll talk about the domain of functions.